Hello friends, Dr. Chad Arno here from the University of Dayton Winds and Brass channel with another trombone basics video, part of an ongoing series of videos aimed at developing trombone players to give them the information they need as they progress along their musical journey. To check out the other videos in this series, go to the Trombone Basics playlist on this channel or just poke around the channel in general. Make sure you have liked, subscribed, click the bell notification or whatever else YouTube makes you do to make sure that things show up in your feed. Lots of great information we hope will be beneficial to trombone players of all ages. Today's video is about what supplies should be in your case every day and what should be nearby for regular maintenance. This assumes, of course, that you have the whole instrument, you have all the music you need for each day. These are the things that will help you have a good rehearsal, have a good practice session, make sure your instrument is working properly, make sure that you're working properly as you go throughout your musical day. So we're going to start with four things that should be in every trombone player's case of any ability level with any trombone of any level of instrument from beginning through advanced. These are four items every trombone player should have. The first is a quality slide lubricant. You want to avoid things called slide oils. Those typically don't work very well. They smell pretty bad and they leave a lot of buildup on the slide that can be difficult to clean up. So slide creams or other liquid lubricants can be very handy for that. If your trombone slide doesn't work well, your trombone doesn't work well at all and you're gonna have a bad day playing. You also need a nice quality tuning slide grease. This is for the other end of the instrument, the tuning slide. Please don't make the mistake that a young Chad Arno made by putting tuning slide grease where I should have put hand slide lubricant that results in a very smooth and very, very slow slide that needs to be cleaned thoroughly to work properly. But the tuning slide grease will go on the other end of the instrument on the tuning slide to make sure the slide moves freely but stays where you leave it. Tuning slide grease comes in small cans or small little bottles that quite honestly you'll probably lose before you run out of them. You don't use it that often depending on how well your instrument works and it lasts quite a long time. So a nice quality hand slide lubricant and a nice quality tuning slide grease. We move from there to a supply that has nothing to do with the instrument, but everything to do with the musician itself. And that is quite simply a good quality pencil. I'm a mechanical pencil guy because I'm not always in a place where there's a pencil sharpener and I don't want to have to worry about the lead breaking off and having no recourse to deal with it. So I use mechanical pencils, but a regular pencil will work fine. You want to make sure you have a good eraser on there as well. What do you use a pencil for? Well, all sorts of things. The director might tell you to play louder or softer or shorter or longer, and you want to mark that in your part. You might also want to mark things like where a repeat sign is, or put a position in, or write a sharp next to something so you remember what that is. Those are all helpful things to do, and there's no shame in marking your music. You want to make sure that you are giving yourself the information you need to play and perform well, or to have a good practice session. A good eraser is always helpful because you might have to erase marks from a previous person who had your music, or you might decide that you didn't like what you marked in there and want to remove that as well. So nice quality pencil should also be in your case at any given time. Another thing that's very helpful is a cloth, something simple like this. But before I go any further, let me just say this. Before you grab any old hand towel out of the linen closet, please talk to whoever in your household is in charge of such things and make sure you're grabbing something that they don't care too much about because over time, a cloth that starts out nice and white like this might end up not very white like this. This cloth has been used for many years to wipe off the slide, to wipe off tuning slides, to polish fingerprints and water spots off the bell, all sorts of things that make a white cloth not very white over time. So whatever cloth you need to use should be something that is not cherished by anyone because it's probably going to get gross over time. It gets to a certain point, you can wash it. Um, it may never get back to its original white condition, but you can try. Or if it gets too gross, you just throw it out and get another one. But a nice cloth that is soft and doesn't leave behind lint should be in your case as well. There should be room in most trombone cases for these four supplies, no matter what. The cloth itself, if it needs to, can be folded or rolled and put inside the bell. Make sure you take it out before you play. These other things should fit in pouches or different compartments in your case. They don't take up much room, but you'll need these all the time. We're going to move from these supplies now onto a set of supplies 
that are helpful for cleaning or maintaining the instrument. The first of these is simply a mouthpiece brush. It's a short bristled brush that you use to clean out the bore and the back bore of your mouthpiece. Because let's face it, anything that could be in your mouth, food or whatnot, can end up in the mouthpiece or in the instrument. And you wanna make sure you have a way to clean that out of there. So you would take the little mouthpiece brush and run it through the bore of the mouthpiece from the cup side and from the shank side to make sure that it's clean. And you'll do that periodically with some water. So a mouthpiece brush is a very helpful thing to have. Another cleaning brush that most trombone players like to keep with them is what we call a snake, and you can see why. It's a flexible brush with bristles on either end that can be run through tuning slides, through the hand slide, through your lead pipe, all sorts of things to brush out debris in there. Again, usually with water will help to rinse out whatever the bristles knock off, but a snake, this one happens to be covered with a plastic or vinyl coating so it's not metal to scratch up the instrument. Snakes are very handy to have around. They coil up, again, the snake analogy, so they fit in the case nicely. But a good quality snake is a very handy thing to have as well. The last item on this list may already be in your case, and that is a metal cleaning rod. It has a ring on one end and sort of like a large needle eye on the other that you thread a cloth through and wrap around, and you use this to swab out your outer slide. Now the cloth that you will carry every day probably won't work for that. So a different cloth will be needed, but don't worry, we'll cover how to use this in a separate video. So how you use this will be covered in a separate video and how you use the mouthpiece brush. We'll cover that in a video as well, how to apply tuning slide grease, how to clean and maintain your slide and lubricate it. All those things will be covered as you go. If you're curious which supplies I recommend and which ones I use, you can go to the resources section of chadarno.com to a page called Recommended Supplies. These are things that I use and have worked well for me. They may not work well for you or for your instrument, so your mileage may vary. Choose wisely whenever you buy anything. And obviously the University of Dayton does not have any sort of official tuning slide grease or slide lubricant that it endorses. So any decision that you use to buy or not buy any of these products are completely up to you um, and shouldn't reflect on me, obviously, or on the University of Dayton, uh, but make informed decisions about the things you purchase for yourself and for your instrument. As always, if you want more information about the University of Dayton Department of Music, you can go to go.udayton.edu slash music, which I'll also link below. If you want more information about me or to hear examples of me playing, you can go to chadarno.com. There's lots of information there. And again, like, subscribe, all those fun things. Till next time.